Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking into calculating a Monte Carlo hand. We have our setup, we have the stacks, we have the price pool, we have everything set up. What are we going to do next? Once we hit finish, then the program HRC runs a first um, batch of sampling, but this is not going to be accurate enough. So what we do is then we need to do some additional sampling so we get accurate results. So once you click finish, you will see that now the model is loading, but the results are not accurate enough. That is very important. I've seen this a lot where then students would be posting these results and be very confused. So what are we going to do next? So once the hand is created, we're going to click this green run Nash calculation button. And then we have another window that pops up and we just accept the default settings and we click OK. I will in a second explain the CI target here. So this is completely fine, uh, the 10. If you want to have more accurate results, you can click on 5. And if you want to um, click on reset regret, that's going to be important later on if we do note locking. So that means if we make changes in the strategies and we want to rerun the spot, reset strategy is not so important. You don't need that. That's basically just giving you cleaner results, clearing out some low frequency plays, which is not that important. So we're going to hit OK. Of course, we want to run the full tree and until the CI value is reached. So now the results are done and whatever this, this spot it is that you wanted to look into. Uh, we can have a look and we see that the results now look already a lot better. So for example, we have here the situation on the bottom left. If for example, the button open pushes, um, we can then look, okay, what is small blind supposed to call? So this is buttons shoving range where remember we can hover through these different windows where you can, depending on what you would like uh, to have display DVs um, or just the frequency. So King 5 suit is shoving 74% of the times and just, yeah, depending on how you like it to be displayed. Now, for the subtrees, it is very important that you always click first on the position that is of interest here, the button pushes. So then we go further down the subtree, which is here then displaying our small blind calling range. Now, in case you sit there with pocket nines and the big blind and you don't really know if you want to overcall, you click this little arrow and then you see pocket nines is a slightly profitable call. And this is how you can navigate through all of these subtrees, whatever position you want to be looking into. What is very important during the sampling process, so when it's calculating the results, is that if you hit cancel, you're not going to lose the progress. So the calculation will resume from the point when it was canceled. All right. Unless, of course, you hit reset strategies or reset uh, regret. Um, it's totally fine to cancel and you save it and you can resume to a later point and then start running again and will continue at the point where you've canceled the uh, calculation or the sampling. Okay, what if you want to make a change? If you want to note lock something or for example, as we've just seen, you want to just look into cutovers button or button in general. So let's assume the button is pushing a lot tighter. So we can do note logging and then also use the option select subtree, which is quite important because it's going to save you a lot of time. So let's assume this player is a bit tighter and remove some of these hands because we think he's not going to be shoving those. And you can make all these adjustments also for open raising, for three bedding, for four bedding, depending on how you think your opponent plays. So now we, you see this little knock, lock appears, we change the strategy. And now of course, we need to sample again to get accurate results for small blind and big blind. So we hit again, run the Nash calculation, we reset the regrets. Uh, we don't need to do this for the strategy. Uh, it does it automatically as it seems, but that's fine. And we select, select, selected subtree. So now it basically samples it for button, small blind, big blind, because those are the relevant positions. All right, we hit okay again. Again, CI 10 is totally fine. If you want to put it to five, 
it provides very good convergence uh, for from most spots, um, especially if you have a final table where you're not gonna have like three-way, four-way spots, then any CI five or even 10 is completely fine. If you also wanna have multi-way spots and go deeper into the tree, maybe flooding uh, a lot of three beds or four beds, then I would recommend to use five. Uh, that's absolutely uh, enough. And now we see that um, this is a new shoving range and the small blind range you can see becomes a little bit tighter, right? Because he pushes tighter. And we also see the overcalling range becomes tighter because now small blind range becomes tighter, button range becomes tighter, and our calling range overcalling range. So if button goes all in, small blind goes all in, our overcalling range has also become uh, tighter. So now we're folding nines, we're calling tens plus, and also ace queen off is not in there anymore. What is important to note, you might see that now for button, uh, there are a lot of hands that are very profitable to call in with. Now we're, what you need to understand that everything is supposed to be Nash equilibrium. So according to the new tighter calling range, button could technically jam or go all in with those hands very profitably. Makes a lot of sense. The tighter opponents call, the more hands we can go all in with. However, in this sim, we're assuming this range, right? If you hit on edit, if you click edit, or if you click here, you see that's the strategy, right? This is what he's technically, uh, what's technically possible for him to or go in with pro uh, profitably according to the small blind and big blinds new calling ranges. That's not the initial Nash equilibrium. That's very important to distinguish. So there's also sometimes some, conf some confusion. Um, if we just uh, remove the lock again and would rerun it again, so now it would calculate the optimal ranges for button, small blind, big blind. And as we've seen, we just changed button strategy. Now, if it would go back in using the optimal strategies, but button would shove tighter, small blind would call loser, big blind would call loser. And this would also result in a lot of these hands not being profitable anymore. I hope that clears out some things. Uh, that was Ben CB for Holy Mauritius Calculator in this video, for the tutorial video, and I see you guys in the next video.